things I could give to you, baby. But I guess you can't see making new memories with me. Oh, yeah, I'll be okay. I'll be okay. I'll be okay. Oh, yeah, I'm good either way. I'm good either way. What happened to me? Today's video is sponsored by VIPSCD.com. I'm sure na naghanap kayo ng murang Windows license. Tamang-tama, merong summer super sale si VIPSCD key. Tuturo ko sa inyo paano mag-purchase at the same time, paano ito i-activate. Alright guys, so nandito na sa page ni VIPSCD key. So ito yung website nila. Uh, they're selling po yung mga uh, Windows license. Ayan, uh, Microsoft Windows 10 Pro OEM. Pwede rin po itong gamitin for upgrade to Windows 11 Pro so that mas makakamura kayo kaysa bumili ng Windows 11 Pro na key. So ito, pagka in-apply nyo itong extra 20% off, 20% off lang yun guys. So sa akin, meron akong special code na 25% off which is yung code na ituturo ko sa inyo mamaya. Paano yun guys? Ang gagawin muna natin is bago kayo magkaroon ng account dito, if you're a first timer here, you need to log in your Facebook and nakalagay na po sa akin. Then, punta lang dito. Sign in. Yan, meron ako account kasi dito. Yun yung lagi kong ginagamit. And there you have it. Nakalagay na po ako. Alright, so yan. Nandito na tayo ulit sa page na to. So, buy now na tayo. So now, andito na tayo sa my order confirmation. And then, yung promotion code natin, which is yung XTNC. So yan, mapapansin nyo yung current price. I click natin yung apply. And ayan, nakita nyo, yung ating 25% discount was applied. Naging $16 na lang siya. So more than $5 din yung nasave natin. Ngayon, and need na rin natin i-type yung email address dito for order delivery. So type nyo lang yung email nyo. And then make sure na naka-apply na yung promotional code bago nyo i-click yung submit order. Then, paano bumili dito? I'm using... Uh, Paymaya, Gcash, or Paypal. Yung tatlo na lang yun. Okay? So, ito yung pinipili ko. So, pay now. Yan. So, mapupunta po kayo dito. So, nasa sa inyo yan kung anong gagamitin nyo. Uh, you can use your credit card, Paymaya, Visa, or Mastercard, or Gcash. So, mga nagtatanong, Christian, paano bumili ng Paymaya and Gcash? Meron dapat kayong uh, card dito. Yung physical card ng Paymaya or Gcash. Meron kasi mga number yon para po silang uh, debit card. Okay? Itatype nyo po yun dito. Make sure lang na meron pong funds yun. Type nyo lang yung card number, validity, and yung CVV. Then, fill out nyo lang tong billing address na yan. So, ganun lang kasimple. Then, continue na lang po. So, uh, hintayin nyo lang mabawasan yung funds. It's either sa Paymaya nyo or sa Gcash kung yun man yung ginamit nyo. So Christian, saan ko makukuha if confirm na yung payment? So pupunta po kayo dito sa taas or user center once you're logged in. So makita nyo dito yan sa may My Purchase Orders. So yan, nakita nyo. So dyan nyo po makikita yung Windows License Key na binili natin dito sa VIP SCD Key. So, kiklik nyo lang yan, then mag appear na yung key. Then, yun yung later na i-activate natin mamaya after kung ma-explain yung mga parts na gagamitin sa build na ito. Hey, what's up guys? Action here. So, hanap nyo ba ay all-rounder na PC build but on a budget? This time, meron ako ditong around 40,000 budget na PC build which I think can do great on gaming, 4K editing, streaming, and productivity. Halimbawa, kung gusto mong mag-venture into streaming or multimedia editing, kahit pa paano without breaking the bank or work and play at the same time, pwedeng-pwedeng itong build na ito para sa'yo. For me, this is probably the best PC parts below 40,000 budget. So let's check out the parts first that we picked up for this build. And then sasabihin ko sa inyo yung mga posibleng alternative or upgrade path later on. Also, take note that the prices may vary depending on the date as well as the store na pagbibilan nyo. So the final price might end up around 38 to 40 40,000 pesos. So for our processor or CPU, we chose the AMD Ryzen 5 5600. My 6 cores and 12 threads with 3.5 GHz base and up to 4.4 GHz boost clock speeds. For gaming, surely more than enough na ito, lalo na kung ang target natin is to game at 1080p medium to high settings. The number of cores would be sufficient na rin for most workloads, gaya ng photo and video editing. For the price, nakuha ko lang siya ng 8,100 lang. For alternatives, pwede din yung Ryzen 5 5600X, kaso mas mahal na ng konti. 
or even the Ryzen 5 5500 na mas mura though di natin may utilize yung PCIe Gen 4 capability ng motherboard and some other features. For the upgrades naman, I think you can go up to 5700X or yung 5800X. Kung gusto mo, but this will only depend if your workload ay nangangailangan talaga ng power ng mas maraming cores. For the CPU cooler, we'll be using then the AMD stock cooler para may idea kayo how this will perform. And also, we'll test an aftermarket cooler which is the Deepcool AK620 White which nakuha namin around 3,600. Although, pwede na yung stock cooler natin for most applications. Even on gaming, as we can see here sa F122 testing between the two coolers. Pero kung mostly nag edit ka or nagre-render, I'd recommend investing in an aftermarket cooler in the future which will offer better cooling performance than the stock rate stealth cooler to better cool the processor since it will give better performance in return. On the motherboard naman, we picked the ASUS B550M-A Prime Wi-Fi. Nabili ko siya at around 6,600 pesos. So, micro ATX motherboard ito. Pwede kayo mag-overclock dito. So, meron siyang DDR4 memory, AM4 socket, and Wi-Fi 6 on board. Kung gusto nyo mas makamura, definitely you can save here some money by getting a lower-end B550M model. Probably yung walang Wi-Fi kung di naman kailangan. But I'd rather have it nowadays since may kasama din itong built-in Bluetooth 5.1 for your devices like Xbox controllers or wireless headsets, for example. For the memory, we choose the T-Force Darkseid Alpha 16GB. So ang frequency niya is 3600 megatransfer per second. Dual channel kit for around 2800 lang. Kung hindi ka naman masyadong heavy multitasker or power user, 16GB is still the sweet spot so far, lalo na kung mostly gaming lang din. But kung feeling mo kulang ito for you, and you're mainly doing video editing or heavy photo editing sa Photoshop, you might as well get a 32GB kit instead. So sa graphics card naman or GPU, we choose the Radeon RX 6600 at around 12,500. So yun yung pinakamurang makukuha nyo na model. Mas mura ito compared sa NVIDIA counterpart niya, which would be the RTX 3060. So halos similar lang naman sila when it comes to raw gaming performance. And since ang target natin dito is 1080p or even 1440p, this card would be enough to run even some of the most demanding titles from mid to high settings. Basta walang ray tracing na involved. Sa upgrade path naman, syempre, no-brainer yan. You can get a higher card than this like the Radeon 7000 series or yung 7600 or go NVIDIA either with RTX 3070 or yung mga bagong release nila na RTX 40 series and make use of their NVENC encoders and CUDA cores lalo na kung streaming ang balak mo and video editing then. For the storage, we choose the Kingston NV2 500GB Gen 4 NVMe SSD which I got around 1,650 lang. Since the PCA Gen 4 compatible yung processor and motherboard natin, we'll utilize that by choosing as much faster Gen 4 NVMe SSD. Kung sa tingin mo kulang yung 500GB, I think yes, kulang talaga yan lalo na sa Steam library and you can also get either 1 or 2TB hard drive or a larger SSD instead. Supplying the power for this system would be the Cooler Master MWE 550W V. 280 plus bronze 550 watt of power with 80 plus bronze efficiency certification so priced around 2950 sapat na ito for our system since 65 watt lang naman yung CPU natin and hindi naman ganung kalakas yung graphics card natin in case you'll upgrade to a higher end graphics card might as well get a new power supply then with higher wattage like 650 to 750 watt lalo na ko yung mga bibilin mo ay yung mga RTX 3080 pataas We'll be putting all of these parts naman inside the Deepcool CH370 which I got for 3,990. Ideal for micro ATX builds since hanggang dun lang ang kaya nitong i-accommodate na board. My front mesh intakes, cleared tempered glass, side panel, and one rear cooling fan included. Dito sa case, syempre, marami kayong options. Anything would do basta kasha yung micro ATX motherboards and depende din sa budget nyo. Nagustuhan ko dito is meron siyang retractable headset holder, madali yung cable management niya, so no problem even for beginners. So aside from these parts, naglagay ako ng cooling fan which is yung Deepcool TF120S. So nasa 525 pesos lang siya. And sleeve extensions na I think around nasa 1,000 pesos lang for better aesthetics. Optional lang naman yung mga ito and pwede din di na kayo maglagay kung talagang tight ang budget nyo. Now that we are done talking about these parts, let's check out a quick montage of the build. And then after, we'll check the benchmarks where we'll explain each items para makita nyo how the build will perform on certain games and applications. So now na i-build ko na yung PC, syempre installed na rin natin yung Windows 10 and the drivers. So yan, nakita nyo, meron po ditong 
uh, watermark na activate windows. Go to settings to activate windows. So yun po yung gagawin natin ngayon. I-activate na po natin yung windows. Yung kanina bumili po tayo sa SCD key or VIP SCD key uh, ng legit na windows. So malalaman natin dito kung legit nga, di ba? So before ko i-activate guys, uh, Christian, bakit di mo tinuro kung paano mag-install ng windows and so on? Um, maraming beses ko na kasing ginawa yan dito uh, sa channel ko. So you better watch yung mga previous Windows 10 or Windows 11 na step-by-step guide. So nandun na po yun guys. Hindi ko na po uulitin dito kasi haba yung video. So for this, ang gagawin na lang natin is i-activate po natin Windows yung binili po natin sa VIP SCD key. Okay, type lang natin dito sa my search bar is activate. Yan, activation yun. Lumalabas na yung activation settings. Okay, so click po natin yun. After that, nandito na po tayo sa may activation settings. Hahanapin lang po natin yung change product key. So yan, nakita nyo guys. Windows 10 Pro. Yun po in-install natin. Windows is not activated. Okay? So gagawin natin, ipipaste po natin dito. Yung change product key. Yan, click nyo lang yan. Then dito po natin ipipaste. So next natin. So check nyo lang yan guys ha. Itong activate windows ng watermark na yan, mawawala po yan once activated na. So activate na din. And there you have it guys. Windows is activated. So we've activated this copy of windows. Yan. So close na din. So check natin to. Alright. So yan guys. Windows 10 Pro. So activation. So Windows is activated with a digital License. So, yan po yung binili natin sa VIP SCD key. Yun yung uh, nag-purchase po ako kanina. Guys, this is a legit 100% genuine po to. So, yan makikita nyo, na-activate po natin yung uh, digital license ng Windows na to. So, I'll put the link guys, yung mismong code. So, you can check na lang yung link doon ni VIP SCD key. So, VIP SCD key, thank you for sponsoring this video. Don't forget about me and all the things I could give to you, baby But I guess you can't see, making new memories with me Oh, yeah I'll be okay, I'll be okay, I'll be okay Oh, yeah I'm good either way, I'm good either way What happened to fair? So for the benchmarks, unahin muna natin yung sa gaming where I tested 8 games on 1080p high settings. Generally speaking, very playable and smooth siya. With games such as F122 and PUBG averaging around 200 FPS or more, gaya ng CSGO na umabot ng 300 plus FPS. While some demanding titles gaya ng Cyberpunk 2077 and Spider-Man Remastered more than 60 FPS pa rin, so still on the enjoyable side. Pwede ka namang mag-drop down ng settings in case you want more FPS as always. Then others like Forza Horizon 5, Apex Legends, mataas pa rin ang average FPS, so gaming-wise, no problem here. Siyempre, bilang all-rounder PC, dapat pwede din itong pang-streaming. So I tested basic live streaming configuration sa OBS, just to get a glimpse of how it will perform while gaming. I tested two encoders, so one is yung X264 with a default very fast preset which uses our CPU, and the other being the AMD GPU hardware encoder with the balance preset. To know what's better in terms of quality and performance. Dito nakita ko na mas okay yung visual quality ng X264 CPU codec. Pero syempre dial CPU ito may performance hit sa games. As you can see here. Pero kung tutusin, okay din ang performance ng AMD hardware encoder. And hindi naman talaga noticeable yung visual difference unless you know where to look for. Which in most cases, hindi rin makikita ng viewer due to stream compression ng mga platforms like Twitch. YouTube or Facebook Live. So honestly, I would recommend mas maganda mag-stick to hardware encoding so that the CPU can deliver more performance sa games. 
You can also play with the settings para makuha mo yung desired na quality and performance na hanap mo. And of course, you need then to edit your gameplays or clips kung magla-livestream ka. So this is where editing comes in. Dito naman, tinesting ko siya on editing a 4K project and clips on DaVinci Resolve 18.5. Smooth siya in timeline scrubbing and playback. Which matters the most in editing for a good editing workflow. Tinry ko na din maglagay ng basic transitions ng Resolve. Although sa una, maglalag siya since may pre-rendering na ginagawa. And then after noon, smooth na rin ang playback. For Premiere Pro user, sorry di ko na test pero I think this will also perform the same naman. Sa panahon ngayon, I think masusulit na ang pera mo if you plan on building a PC on a budget since nagmura na mostly ang mga parts ngayon. Lalo na kung hindi naman yung latest generation parts ang bibilin mo since usually meron niyang tinatawag na early adapter stacks. I think kayang-kaya na ngayon ng 40,000 budget mo na makakabuild ka ng decent na all-rounder na PC na okay ang performance, okay ang aesthetics, and magagamit mo either on gaming, productivity, and content creation. Siyempre, in terms of upgrading naman, we are already at the end of the AM4 platform since may AM5 na. Pero like I said, if you're in a strict budget ngayon, but still want some decent upgrades options in the future, you can simply upgrade your CPU to a higher one up to Ryzen 7 5700X. And also your RAM to a higher capacity as well as the GPU and storage. So there you have it guys, this has been Action. So like the video, subscribe, and I'll see you on my next gaming PC build.